with Al McFarland, live from the Marcus Garvey House in North Minneapolis. We're pleased to present a special interview with a person that I call a hero, a leader, and uh, a person that I think you're going to want to know about, too. Uh, Dr. Carol Eggert is a senior vice president in charge of military and veterans affairs with Comcast NBC Universal. She's also a retired brigadier general in the U.S. Army. And uh, I am enjoying the opportunity to talk with her because I share with her my experiences and my stories as an ex-Navy guy uh, who uh, took the uh, benefit of being a youngster and uh, uh, having a chance to serve the country and to grow from that service, but also to benefit the, to enjoy the benefits of being a veteran. And so I want to share that with my community so when we're done, people will say, you know what, uh, that's an option for me. I can look at uh, growing and serving at the same time, and there's tremendous benefit, GI Bill for a house, GI Bill for education, and the satisfaction of knowing you've done your part to serve your community and your country. Mm -hmm. well, let me talk about you first, uh, Carol Eggert. Uh, she's worked collaboratively across Comcast, NBC Universal platforms to provide strategic leadership to all aspects of programs uh, and outreach uh, that engage military and veteran communities. The work includes recruiting, hiring, uh, building talent at all levels of the Comcast organization. She has more than 30 years of experience in uh, the military and civilian life that she brings to Comcast. In her civilian role, she's assisted various organizations in the private, government, and nonprofit sectors with their initiatives in knowledge management, in strategic planning, and project management. During her career, she served in the Army, the Army Reserve, and the National Guard. She served in a variety of command and staff positions, including Assistant Adjutant General, Battalion Commander, and Chief of Staff, and recently she retired as a Brigadier General. She's also worked with members from all branches of the military, completed numerous overseas deployments, including a 15-month combat tour in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom, uh, she was the Chief of Women's Initiatives Division and Senior Liaison to the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. That's where she conducted a full-scale analysis of women's initiatives and developed a strategic plan for the economic and political empowerment of Iraqi women under the U.S. Secretary of State. She's a recipient of numerous awards and commendations and recognition of her contributions, including the Legion of Merit, the Bronze Star, Purple Heart, and multiple awards of the Meritorious, Meritorious Service Medal. She's a graduate of the prestigious U.S. Army War College, where she served as uh, on the faculty and was later selected as the Deputy Commandant for Reserve Affairs. She holds a bachelor's degree in liberal studies, two master's degrees in instructional design and strategic international studies, and a doctoral degree in organizational leadership. She serves on the Corporate Advisory Board for the Westchester University and the Boards of Directors for Valley Forge Military Academy Board and um, the Philly Pops. The Philly Pops. Cool. <laughs> and, and a group um, called Psych Armor. Her leadership in the private sector has, has been recognized by Hill Vets. They placed her on their 2016 list of the 100 most influential veterans in America. She's also been celebrated by the Philadelphia Business Journal. They named her one of their 2016 veterans of influence. So I'm pleased to have you, General Eggert, uh, Dr. Eggert, thank you so much for your service. Thank you for your leadership. And you're here to serve and talk about, bring attention to the role of women in the military in particular. Talk about why you're here this weekend, first of all. Well, first of all, Al, thank you for inviting me, and thank you for what you're doing. You know, you talked about military service, but I'm a strong believer in there's so many different ways to serve our communities, and you have gone from serving the country to serving your community, and that is admirable, and I'm just honored to be sitting here next well, to you. thank you, thank you. And I'm excited to be out here in Minneapolis. Seems to be one of my most favorite places to visit. Um, I deployed with the Red Bulls to Iraq. Uh, they, when a, when a unit deploys, they have to fill in some gaps, and the call went out who, who could join them, and of course, 
in the military, when someone asks if you can help out, you volunteer and say, I, I can certainly do whatever you need. So I was honored to go with those folks. And so special place in my heart for the Red Bulls and for Minnesota. I'm back out here this weekend to support the Women's Veterans Symposium um, that will be held on Saturday over mm -hmm. at the VA. I'm excited about that event, and I'm excited to be speaking to women about resiliency, uh, self-care, mm -hmm. Um, taking advantage of their benefits at the as you just mentioned so the women's veterans conference over um, at the VA I'm excited to be here and also just to support our community here sure, in, sure. in Minneapolis well this is women's history month that's one thing that's important and one of the events uh, focuses of the event is uh, surviving trauma and in particular sexual trauma uh, experienced by women in the military talk about that what do you tell uh, our community in the world about how we uh, discover and support resiliency and healing uh, for people who are experiencing trauma. Thanks for bringing that up. And, it, and it's really all different kinds of trauma. Mm -hmm. And yes, we're, we're making note of the issues of sexual trauma in the military because we have to bring that forward. Um, it's not that it's any more prevalent than right. in the public sector, but it's so important to support our women who serve. Mm -hmm. And we've made great strides when it comes to sexual trauma. And now we're really focusing on those women who have experienced it and how can we help them deal with some of those challenges. And it's not all that different than dealing with any mm -hmm. kind of trauma. It's, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. focusing on resiliency mm -hmm. um, and how can you get past any traumatic experience in in your life and I'm, I'm proud of the military for facing the issue mm -hmm. for fixing the issue in service and then for the VA for the Veteran Affairs Administration for supporting our women as they recover from and, those and negative when, experiences and when you teach and promote self-care what's the kernel of the idea what's the, the main theme how do you promote uh, adoption and awareness and effective self-care for the individual. This probably is for anybody, men or women. Right, men or women. Man yeah. or woman. First of all, it's all about recognizing mm -hmm. what are you carrying with you? Mm -hmm. what, what can you recognize? Can you, from the experience, what is it doing to you? Mm -hmm. And then how do you deal with that? So you, first is self-awareness, understanding what you've gone through and how to deal with each aspect of that. And, and that's why at the VA there's so much help for that. Mm -hmm. So self-care is really first self-awareness. You can only fix those things you're, you know of. And then piece by piece addressing them. And not taking the negative path that takes you further down the, the spiral of decline. So often we, we tend to live in our past and in our past experiences. And so we allow them to bring us down rather than to learn from them and lift us up. So I think that is critical. And I'm a strong believer in health and wellness as the path to resilience. And so self-care is also physical. Let's, let's make sure we, we nutritional, we eat right. right. And I don't use the word exercise. Mm -hmm. I use the word movement. Mm -hmm. Just move. Mm -hmm. Less screen time. Get out there and move. And then also taking the time for yourself. And you know for many women and also just young parents, we put our children first. Mm -hmm. But it's like the oxygen mask. Put your own mask on first right. before you can help others. That's and right. I think women need to accept that, embrace it, and say, I need some time. And luckily, the Veterans Affairs Administration is, is helping with that. I'm Al McFarland. This is a special edition of Conversations with Al McFarland, a live webcast from the Marcus Garvey House in Minneapolis. My guest is General Carol Eggert, Dr. Carol Eggert. Uh, a retired Brigadier General, and she leads Comcast's wonderful initiative to reach out, engage, support, grow opportunity for veterans. So it's a recognition of the important role veterans have played for the country, in the country, and how do you use that talent, that, link, that learning uh, in uh, the private sector in a company like Comcast. So kudos to Comcast for what they're doing. What is your story, um, General? Eggert, how did you decide to become uh, the military person that you are? You started off, I, I told you, as an enlisted person, and you rose to being a general. Three stars, a three star general? Two uh, no, star, no, one, one star, star one general. One star general, okay, right, okay. Well, I'm a Navy guy, so pardon that for. <laughs> uh, so, what's your story? How'd you, how'd you start? 
Well, similar to what you just said, um, I was 17, mm -hmm. and you ask about the Philly Pops. Mm -hmm. I joined the band. I joined the Women's Army Corps Band, and I will tell you, first of all, a nice place to play your French horn. I was no um, prodigy that I could start right out with the Philadelphia Orchestra, but where could I play? Get the money to buy a horn, but also the GI Bill which is why so many people join the military, those incredible education benefits. I come from a family of eight children. Wow. Um, we've all gone to college, but it, you know, when you're, when you're from a family of eight, you look for some way to distinguish yourself from your siblings. And uh, I said, okay, I'm gonna join the army. And my father, a World War II veteran said, Carol, I don't think nice girls join the army. <laughs> um, and I think because it was the band, Mm -hmm. It was okay, because mm -hmm. they had to sign and give me permission at 17. Mm -hmm. um, but my father went on to be my greatest advocate mm -hmm. in the military. But, you know, you join for yourself and for those great benefits, but as you t spend time in the service, and in service to others, as you know, um, it's it starts to grow, and you start to understand that you're part of something much bigger. So I joined for the GI Bill. I stayed to serve others, and... After my um, uh, term of service, when I retired, this at Comcast was just another chance to serve that community. And I call it, I didn't, I wasn't looking for a job. I wasn't looking for a position. I had my retirement benefits, but I found a purpose at Comcast. They are in fact committed mm -hmm. to the military community. And that's what the term we use because we wanna be inclusive with the military community. We say veterans, mm -hmm. National Guard and Reserve, you know how critical the National Guard here is in Minnesota. Yes. Who is out there rescuing people in the floods that might happen this weekend? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also military spouses. Our military spouses suffer quite a bit because of supporting someone who serves. Their resumes have gaps because mm -hmm. they move. Right. So unless the private sector understands what a military spouse has gone through, we won't interview them. We'll just say, look at this resume. They couldn't hold a job because it looks like they change jobs every couple of years. But really, it's because of that service to our country and they bring incredible talent. So we use the term supporting the military community as customers, as in our communities, and then of course supporting our veteran population. And I'm really proud of what we do. Well, one of the things you're doing that is equally important is uh, providing um, through the Internet Essentials Program uh, a, a bridge, a path, a connectivity for veterans, and I think that's phenomenal. Talk about that if you so will. So, Al, I really appreciate you bringing that up. Um, internet access is critical for our veterans, mm -hmm. and this is low-income um, veterans can have low-cost internet to their homes. Um, as well as access to our hotspots. And I think there's about 20,000 low-income veterans here in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, on that continuum of success, you're not gonna get a job if you don't have internet access. You cannot apply for a job on your phone. I mean, you can, but that's quite a challenge. That's right. So we need to work with our veterans. And the VA, you can't access your VA benefits without access to a computer. Uh, so when veterans have to go to the library or sit outside using their phone from, you know, a, a hotspot, that's not ideal. So we expanded our Internet Essentials, which is low-cost Internet for low-income families, to specifically target our veterans. And, and we're just honored to be doing it here in Minneapolis. I think it'll make a difference. It'll keep a veteran who is in that challenged role from moving into homelessness, joblessness, Mm -hmm. drug addiction. Mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer in the continuum up, not down. That's right. So let's catch it at the place of job readiness. What I love about Comcast uh, General is the uh, commitment to support organizations like the Minnesota Assistance Council for Veterans. They call it MACV. MACV. Phenomenal. And also you've got uh, this commitment that supports veterans supporting families with kids in sports. It's called the uh, United Heroes League. Uh, I think what you're doing is, in a sense, setting the bar very high for the corporate community. And I want to give you personally and the company credit for being engaged the way you are to support veterans and through veterans supporting families, communities, young people. And now you're right, it's, it's about the families. Uh, a person serves, but their family serves behind them and can make all the difference. And all things are local. Mm -hmm. So I might 
lead the strategy for military engagement across the country, but what happens is what happens locally. So understanding, um, and we've got great Comcast teams that understand their local communities, and where should we support? Mm -hmm. So those two organizations, um, I'm just honored to be able to support them here at a local level because that's where you can really make the difference. But I'd like to tell you, if I may, Please. about two other things we do. I feel very strongly that we give back to other companies mm -hmm. who want to engage the military community. We are so lucky we have a team of nine people, all with military background, mm -hmm. to build this strategy and put it in place. But we understand that many companies don't. Eighty percent of veterans are hired by small to medium businesses. Yeah. How do they engage the military community? They don't have a general officer that had 30 years of experience building their strategy. So we put together the Comcast Employer School, <laughs> which is no cost content for anybody um, online, how to, how to set up a military engagement program, why hire military veterans, what's the issue with military spouses, how to build veteran-owned businesses into your supply chain. So this is no cost online content to help other businesses mm -hmm reach out to the military community. And we went one step further because, Al, what I found when I came out here, out here, I call it that way, uh, out here from the military, is there is a civilian military divide. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you see that also in our multicultural yes. um, communities. We need to bring people together, yeah. not, not pull them apart. We need to work together um, to, to build understanding and build bridges. And I saw this civ mill divide. So we created a program with SHRM, Society for Human Resource Management. Sure. That's the professional sure. society yeah. Yeah. where our, our TA and our HR professionals receive certifications mm -hmm. in their continuing ed uh, credits. So we created a uh, Veterans at Work Ready Certificate Program. No cost to anybody because mm -hmm. we're funding that. Mm -hmm. They take some courses, they take the tests, and they become certified as Veteran at Work Ready. So it tells a military person, hey, they've got people there that understand me. Mm -hmm. And not just the chance that they'll run into an owl with a Navy background <laughs> that we get each other. Right, right. But how do we help bring our civilian brothers and sisters along and build what I call military acumen? So giving back to the business community, I think, is also critical. Well, Carol, uh, the reason I really wanted to do this interview is because I know that you're so passionate about this. But I also believe that I have a mission, I have a role, an obligation, a duty to talk about my experience and the opportunity to serve and the gain that I personally experienced, and to do that in a way that comes across as authentic, that is verifiable, and that can motivate uh, my interest is in motivating young black boys and black girls to say, you know what, uh, I could be in the Navy, I could be in the Army, I could be in the Air Force, I could do military service, and guess what, besides serving, I'm gonna have all these tremendous opportunities in business, uh, in just being a effective, professional mm -hmm. training in the military, phenomenal. And so it's important to me to keep that conversation going and to do more than we've been doing because I remember, Carol, uh, growing up in Kansas City uh, where I lived at 28th in Brooklyn once or twice a year. Uh, Mr. Stevenson, Mr. Johnson, uh, all these men, mostly men in the neighborhood, would mobilize with the Missouri National Guard. So everybody in the neighborhood, all the kids, all the families would be buzzing, mm -hmm. watching uh, uncles, fathers, neighbors, and the, the, the brown trucks, yep. and the guys going to the armory. And it was a symbol of pride. So we all knew what, what was happening when our, our mailman, you know, the, the doctor, the mm -hmm. teacher, mm -hmm. suited up for their two week deployment right. or whatever it was. And I think that we dropped the ball in uh, elevating that story. And so my job uh, is to bring that uh, excitement, awareness, and appreciation back in a way that it motivates more of us to say, you know what, this is part of who we are. And this reflects our commitment to community, to family, and to personal and collective development. That's what I think, that's my duty. I think that's just incredible. And you, you are right on when you talk about that. Less than 1% serve now. We're mm -hmm. no longer a draft. Mm -hmm. We have an all volunteer service. And it tends to stay in legacy lines. If your parents serve, you might serve. Mm -hmm. But we don't have a lot of new families mm -hmm. serving. And it's, it's the military's problem, and it's the civilian sector's problem. And we need to bring it together. Yeah. And the military's doing some great things to get to know your military, to educate the civilian sector. But young boys and girls, no matter what color, aren't seeing the military as a reliable option. And, 
I think we do need to change that story, and mm -hmm. I think you doing this is one way we do it. I mm -hmm. mean, I wouldn't be where I am. The GI Bill paid for my degrees. Mm -hmm. It made me understand the value of lifelong learning. I'm not far from those kids in those neighborhoods with a family of eight yeah. kids. I mean, yeah. we didn't have a lot of money. Right. Um, I had to figure out how to go to college or how to just do something, and the military provided that option. And there's so many ways to serve but don't discount that way to serve. And mm -hmm. then, if I can speak to those who have served, I think we all have an obligation to give back. Mm -hmm. So once you've done this, come out to your communities. And actually, studies show that veterans serve their communities at a higher rate than non-veterans. And I think it's that, that spirit, that commitment to service that just stays with you. Figure out ways to give back. I had uh, so much fun. Uh, you know this guy here. Oh, Rico Roman. Love him. And so, he is a veteran. So much fun interviewing this veteran. And he is part of kind of a, the Wounded Warriors program. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, Plays he, in the Paralympics. Paralympics. And he's a gold medal winner. And uh, through Comcast, I had a chance to interview him and other uh, Olympic uh, uh, competitors. Mm -hmm. And you're supporting that as well. That's because once again, that's a great story. Mm -hmm. uh, people identify with stories, not facts. Mm -hmm. And Rico's story, he will tell you, he'll be the first person to tell you, you know, being, um, you know, wounded, losing limbs. He was down and out. He couldn't figure out what to do. And then somebody said, come join the sled hockey team. And he thought, I hate hockey. Last thing I want to do is do hockey. But when he joined, he said the camaraderie of those folks together supporting him, it changed the way he looked at life. And now look at him with his family, children. He's just amazing. I want to close with uh, recognizing what I read in the intro, intro uh, about your uh, awarded service. Tell me how, how it happens. Uh, tell me what the Bronze Star is, what the Purple Heart is, and uh, the Legion of Merit, and how do those things uh, come to you? And what do they mean to you? Uh, you know. It, to me, it means you're a hero. I just mm -hmm. want to say that. But it may not mean the same thing, and don't be shy. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I think I want uh, our people to know that you can serve and you can attain, you can do the extraordinary, and you've done that. And I think you don't even think about doing the extraordinary. When you're in the military, extraordinary situations are presented to you and you perform mm. because you have a team that's depending on you. So. You don't have to work real hard to be in extraordinary situations in the military. Every day you're faced with challenges, and I'm not talking just combat. But at, most military folks will tell you they're not heroes. They were doing what they were asked to do. They were supporting their teams, and I, I think that way. Um, but the Bronze Star is for exemplary service in a combat zone, mm -hmm. which isn't always easy mm -hmm. to keep your head on your shoulders and do what you need to do. Um, Legion of Merit means you have a long history of service to your country, um, and you've done, as you said, extraordinary things. It's, it's, it's an award and recognition of performance and innovative thinking, and then we know what the Purple Heart is, and everybody will tell you that the Purple Heart is not something you want, um, but it's something everybody, whether they have a Purple Heart or not, mm -hmm. You raised your hand, and you were willing to be injured or to die for your country. That's right. That's so right. in a way, we all are Purple Heart recipients because mm -hmm. we said yes. You're not allowed to say, yeah, I'll join, but don't put me in a place where I can get hurt by the, no. by the bad guys. It doesn't work that way. We all uh, say yeah, that, and we yeah. all recognize that responsibility. So I don't put a lot of stock in the Purple Heart. I, sometimes I call it the Too Dumb to Duck Award. <laughs> <laughs> but please, don't take that with any disrespect. Um, Anybody will put themselves in the positions right. they need to be in right. to serve the country. Carol Eggert, uh, General Eggert, Dr. Eggert, thank you so very much for your service. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for uh, your service to your company, Comcast. You, you guys are doing some great stuff, but thank you for spending time with me this morning. Oh, thank you, and thank you for what you're doing. You know, to, as I said, we all need to work together. Diversity and inclusion is a critical principle. I started in the Women's Army Corps, where we were segregated by gender. So I've seen what coming together can do. So we all must reach out to our multicultural partners and be one family. So you're doing that, and that's why I'm just so honored to be here. So thank you so much. Well, thank you so much as well. And thank you for listening. Hope you've enjoyed this conversation. If you like this kind of conversation, uh, follow us on Facebook and share this. 
Uh, we'll be doing this regularly, and we want you to be a part of it as well. So thank you. We'll see you next time. I'm Al McFarland. <laughs>